as the sun dipped below the horizon casting a warm orange glow over the Mississippi River Valley, the air vibrated with whispers of conspiracy. It was the year 2436 BCE, and the region buzzed with news of a daring heist that would etch its place in history as one of the most brazen crimes of all time. In the heart of the valley, the mighty city of Kokia stood as a testament to the ingenuity and prosperity of the Mississippian people. Its earthen pyramids, adorned with intricate carvings and ceremonial artifacts, towered above the lush forests, a symbol of the city's wealth and power. Here, in the epicenter of this ancient metropolis, the great copper heist was set in motion. A Kakawa, a cunning and enigmatic figure, masterminded the heist. A skilled trader and smuggler with a reputation for infiltrating the most heavily guarded strongholds, Akakawa had spent months gathering intelligence, bribing officials, and recruiting a team of skilled thieves from the farthest reaches of the farthest reaches of the valley. I. His plan was to infiltrate the sacred temple of the Copper Serpent, where the most valuable treasures of the Mississippian people were kept, and escape with the prized copper artifacts. On the night of the heist, the temple's priests and guards were distracted by a grand ceremonial feast celebrating the summer solstice. As revelers indulged in food, drink, and music, Akakawa's team slipped into the shadows, their dark cloaks blending seamlessly into the night. With precision and stealth, they navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the temple, avoiding the watchful eyes of the stone statues that lined the walls. The air was thick with the scent of burning incense and the soft glow of torches as the thieves reached the inner sanctum of the temple. Before them lay the treasure trove of the copper serpent, a glittering array of copper ornaments, tools, and ceremonial objects that sparkled like stars in the flickering light. Uh, Akako's team worked with lightning speed, gathering the most valuable items into sacks and bundles, their hands moving with precision that belied the gravity of their crime. As they made their escape, the thieves left behind a trail of subtle clues designed to mislead and confuse any would-be pursuers. They vanished into the night, their footsteps lost in the din of the celebration, leaving behind a city in chaos and a people in shock. The aftermath of the heist was marked by a frenzy of activity as the authorities scrambled to apprehend the culprits and recover the stolen treasures. The temple's high priestess, Ictonike, a wise and powerful woman, called upon the spirits of the land to guide the investigation. Soon a network of informants and spies was spread across the valley searching for any sign of Akakawa and his team. But the master thief had planned his escape route with meticulous care, using his knowledge of the valley's hidden waterways and secret trails to evade capture. He and his team disappeared into the wilderness, their loot stashed away in hidden caches, waiting to be smuggled out of the valley and sold on the black market. The great copper heist of the Mississippi River Valley would go down in history as one of the most daring crimes of all time, a testament to the cunning and ingenuity of Akakawa and his team. Though the treasures of the Copper Serpent were never recovered, their legend lived on, a reminder of the power of human ingenuity and the allure of the forbidden. As the sun rose over the Mississippi River Valley during the Bronze Age, the air vibrated with the hum of activity. This lush and fertile expanse stretching from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico was a thriving hub of commerce and industry with copper at its core. The precious metal, prized for its durability and malleability, fueled the economies of Native American tribes and early settlers who called the valley home. Villages and trading posts sprouted along the river's serpentine course. Their inhabitants engaged in a flourishing copper trade that spanned hundreds of miles. Canoes and dugout boats crafted from sturdy cypress trees plied the waters carrying cargoes of copper ingots, tools, and ornaments to eager buyers. The air was redolent with the smell of hot metal and wood smoke, mingling with the earthy scent of the river and the sweet songs of birds. At the heart of the valley, the mighty Cahokia tribe held sway, their capital city a marvel of earthen mounds and thatched roofs. Here, copper was king, and the tribe's skilled artisans fashioned the metal into a dazzling array of tools, weapons, and ceremonial objects. Essential tools like adzes, chisels, and axes were crafted with precision and care, while swords and spears adorned with intricate designs and symbols were forged for the tribe's warriors. But copper's significance extended far beyond practicality and warfare. In the spiritual realm, the metal held a sacred significance, believed to possess mystical powers that connected the people to their ancestors and the land itself.
Ceremonial objects such as copper-covered masks and ritualistic staffs were crafted with reverence and devotion used in elaborate ceremonies to ensure the fertility of the land, the bounty of the hunt, and the protection of the tribe. As the seasons passed, the copper trade continued to flourish, drawing in early settlers from distant lands. These newcomers, awestruck by the valley's natural beauty and the ingenuity of its inhabitants, brought with them new techniques and tools, further enriching the region's cultural tapestry. The Mississippi River Valley, a true melting pot of cultures, pulsed with energy and creativity, its people bound together by their shared reverence for the precious metal. In this vibrant world, the copper trade remained the lifeblood of the region, a testament to the ingenuity, creativity, and resilience of its people. But amidst this tranquility, the great copper heist, a daring and audacious crime, would soon shatter the peace, sending shockwaves throughout the region and forever altering the course of history. In the sweltering summer of 2436 BCE, the Mississippi River Valley teemed with activity. The air was heavy with the scent of sweat and smoke as thousands of laborers toiled in the blistering heat their bronzed skin glistening with perspiration as they unearthed the region's most prized treasure, copper. For generations, the valley's rich deposits had fueled the growth of mighty empires and sparked fierce rivalries, serving as the lifeblood of ancient civilizations. As one ventured deeper into the valley, the landscape transformed into a tapestry of rust-hued hills and valleys, where copper ore lay hidden beneath the earth like a treasure trove waiting to be unearthed. The region's unique geology had created a perfect storm of copper deposits, with veins of malachite and azurite snaking through the rock like emerald and blue serpents. It was as if the earth itself had been imbued with the essence of the metal ordained by the ancient gods to be the copper capital of the ancient world. The sheer scale of the copper deposits was staggering. Estimates suggested that over one, five billion pounds of the precious metal had been extracted during this period, a figure that would have been unimaginable to the ancient mines that first stumbled upon the valley's riches. The copper was of the highest quality, with a purity that would have been the envy of even the most skilled metallurgists of the time. As news of the valley's copper riches spread ancient civilizations from far and wide flocked to the region, their eyes fixed on the glittering prize. The Egyptians, with their mighty pyramids and golden treasures, sent expeditions to tap into the valley's wealth, as did the Mesopotamians with their sophisticated cities and intricate irrigation systems. Even the enigmatic Harappans with their mysterious script and advanced urban planning were drawn to the valley's copper, their merchants and traders navigating treacherous rivers and trade routes to claim their share of the bounty. The laborious process of extracting the copper was a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of the people. Thousands of workers toiled in the blistering heat, fueled by a diet of corn and beans to unearth the precious ore. The sound of pickaxes striking stone echoed through the valleys as the workers' bodies glistened with perspiration, their muscles rippling beneath their bronze skin as they hauled the heavy ore to the surface. As the copper was extracted, it was smelted in great furnaces, the flames roaring like a beast as the metal was purified and shaped into ingots. The ingots, stamped with the symbols of the various civilizations, were then transported down the Mississippi River, a serpentine artery that pulsed with life as it wound its way through the heart of the continent. The copper was used to fashion tools, weapons, and ornaments, its warm golden glow illuminating the lives of the ancient people who coveted it so dearly. The great copper heist of the Mississippi River Valley would go down in history as one of the most remarkable episodes of ancient times, a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of the people who called this fertile region home. Copper, that most coveted of resources, had brought civilizations together, fueling their growth and sparking their imagination. As the last remnants of the copper were extracted, the valley was left to slumber, its secrets hidden beneath the earth waiting for the next generation of treasure seekers to uncover its riches once more. The great copper heist of the Mississippi River Valley, circa 2436 BCE, was a daring and intricate operation that would etch its place in the annals of history as one of the most audacious crimes of all time. Amidst the turmoil and upheaval that beset the mighty River Valley, a group of cunning and resourceful thieves known only as the Copper Clan saw an opportunity to strike it rich. For generations, the Mississippi River Valley had been renowned for its vast deposits of copper, 
a precious metal coveted by kings and chieftains alike. The Copper Clan, a motley crew of outcasts and misfits, had spent years studying the river's currents and eddies, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. That moment arrived on a sweltering summer evening, when a flotilla of cargo barges, laden with copper ingots and precious artifacts, set sail from the bustling port city of Cahokia. Disguised as itinerant traders, the Copper Clan had infiltrated the port city weeks earlier, gathering intelligence and waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Under the light of a full moon, they launched a fleet of swift and agile canoes, each one crewed by a team of skilled paddlers and armed with deadly precision. The attack was swift and merciless, with the Copper Clan canoes darting between the slower moving barges, their paddles dipping silently into the water as they closed in for the kill. Sailors and warriors, caught off guard and outnumbered, were quickly overwhelmed and the copper ingots were swiftly transferred to the waiting canoes. As the Copper Clan made their escape, they left behind a trail of destruction and chaos. The barges, now emptying adrift, were set ablaze, sending towering plumes of flame and smoke into the night air. The screams of the sailors and warriors echoed across the water as they were left to fend for themselves in the darkness. The Copper Clan made their way back to their secret hideout, a hidden cavern deep in the Mississippi River Valley. There. They divided their spoils, melting down the copper ingots into glittering bars of pure metal as a hall of unimaginable wealth, one that would set them up for life in cement, their reputation as the greatest thieves the ancient world had ever known. The great copper heist was more than just a daring crime. It was a turning point in the history of the region. The loss of the copper cargo was a devastating blow to the Itawaiian army, which had been relying on the shipment to forge weapons and tools for their ongoing campaign against the rival city-state of Moundville. In the aftermath of the heist, the balance of power in the Mississippi River Valley began to shift. The Itawaiians, weakened and demoralized, were forced to retreat from their conquests, allowing the Mound villains to gain the upper hand. The Copper Clan disappeared into the shadows, their names becoming the stuff of legend and myth. So, yet, the legacy of the great copper heist lived on a testament to the cunning and audacity of the ancient thieves who had dared to defy the mighty powers of the Mississippi River Valley. For generations to come, the story of the Copper Clan would be told and retold, a reminder of the power of ingenuity and daring in the face of overwhelming odds. In the Mississippi River Valley's lush, verdant heart, a sophisticated civilization flourished, its influence extending from Ohio's rolling hills to Illinois' fertile plains and Wisconsin's misty shores. This was the realm of the Hopewell culture, a complex mound-building society that dominated the coveted copper trade. As the sun rose over the valley, the Hopewell people stirred, their daily rhythms harmonizing with the gentle lapping of the Mississippi's waters against the riverbanks. Villages nestled among towering oak and hickory trees, bustled with activity, the air thick with wood smoke and roasting meats. Majestic earthen mounds stood at each village's heart, testaments to the Hopewell's advanced engineering skills and deep spiritual connection to the land. The Hopewell's mastery of copperworking was legendary, with skilled artisans hammering and shaping the precious metal into intricate ornaments, ceremonial objects, and tools of unparalleled beauty. The copper extracted from the valley's rich deposits was prized for its vibrant, burnished hue, said to hold the essence of the sun itself. As the primary purveyors of copper, the Hopewell controlled the flow of this valuable resource, carefully regulating its distribution to maintain their dominance over regional trade networks. Merchants and traders from distant lands, drawn by the allure of the precious metal, would journey up the Mississippi, their canoes laden with exotic goods, to negotiate with Hopewell leaders. These encounters, often marked by elat ceremonies and gift-giving, reinforced the Hopewell's position as the preeminent power brokers of the valley. Copper was not merely a commercial commodity, but an integral aspect of the Hopewell's spiritual and social fabric. The metal was believed to hold sacred properties, imbuing its possessors with spiritual power and authority. Hopewell leaders, resplendent in their copper-adorned regalia, would preside over grand ceremonies where the metal was offered to the spirits in exchange for fertility, prosperity, and protection. As the seasons passed, the Hopewell's grip on the copper trade tightened, their influence radiating outward from the valley like ripples on a pond. Their civilization was a marvel of sophistication, where art, spirituality, and commerce blended seamlessly, and the copper trade stood as the very lifeblood of their society. The Hopewell culture had forged 
a true masterpiece, a testament to human ingenuity and creativity. In the sweltering summer of 2436 BCE, the Mississippi River Valley pulsed with activity as the Hopewell people, master craftsmen and innovators, toiled tirelessly to unlock the secrets of copper extraction, driven by a profound understanding of a metal's potential to adorn, protect, and connect them with the spiritual realm. Their quest for perfection was unwavering. Deep within the valley's lush forests, the Hopewell people had stumbled upon rich copper deposits, their reddish hue glowing like embers in the sunlight. Amidst the ancient trees and winding streams, they developed a sophisticated system of copper extraction, rivaling the greatest metallurgical achievements of the ancient world. The process began with the meticulous selection of copper ore, chosen for its high concentration of the precious metal. The Hopewell people would then crush the ore into a fine powder using mortars and pestles crafted from the hardest granite. As the sun beat down upon their backs, they would mix the powder with water, creating a rich, turquoise-hued slurry that seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly energy. Next, they employed a technique known as cupellation, where the slurry was heated to extreme temperatures, causing the copper to separate from its impurities. The air was thick with the acrid smell of burning wood, and the sound of crackling flames as the copper began to take shape. As the molten metal cooled, the Hopewell people carefully poured it into intricately carved molds, fashioned from the finest river clay. Adorned with symbols of their ancestors and the spirits of the land, these molds imparted a deep mystical significance to the copper artifacts that emerged. The resulting copper artifacts were breathtaking. Delicate earrings, shaped like the wings of the eagle, seemed to shimmer with an inner light, as if infused with the essence of the sun. Intricately woven necklaces adorned with tiny gleaming copper beads told the stories of the tribe's history and mythology. Ceremonial axes, their blades forged from the strongest, most resilient copper, seemed to hum with a power that was both ancient and eternal. The Hopewell people's mastery of copper extraction extended far beyond aesthetics. Their advanced metallurgical techniques allowed them to craft tools of unparalleled strength and durability, capable of withstanding the rigors of daily life in the Mississippi River Valley. The copper-tipped arrows, forged with precision and care, flew straight and true, bringing down the mighty deer and turkey that roamed the forest. Copper-bladed knives, their edges honed to a razor sharpness, sliced through the toughest hides and the most resilient fibers with ease. As news of the Hopewell people's remarkable copper artifacts spread, traders and travelers from across the ancient world flocked to the Mississippi River Valley. They came bearing gifts of exotic spices, rare feathers, and polished gemstones, all in the hopes of acquiring a piece of the Hopewell people's coveted copper. As the tribe's reputation grew, so too did their influence, until they stood as one of the most powerful and respected nations in the ancient world. In the end, it was the Hopewell people's sophisticated system of copper extraction that would prove to be their greatest legacy, a testament to their ingenuity, creativity, and unwavering dedication to excellence. For in the Mississippi River Valley, where the ancient forests whispered secrets to the wind, the Hopewell people had unlocked the secrets of copper, forging a civilization that would endure for generations to come. As the sun rose over the Mississippi River Valley, the air vibrated with the hum of activity. The Hopewell people, masters of the region's rich copper deposits, went about their daily routines with precision, their hands moving deftly as they crafted tools, ornaments, and ceremonial objects from the prized metal. For generations they had controlled the flow of copper, trading it with neighboring tribes and settlers who sought to tap into its value. But as demand for copper surged, the valley's tranquility began to unravel. Rival tribes, drawn by the promise of wealth and power, started to encroach on Hopewell territory. The Iroquois, with their fierce warriors and cunning traders, established a series of makeshift camps along the river's banks, followed by the Shawnee, who brought their expertise in hunting and gathering, as well as a deep understanding of the valley's hidden waterways. Settlers, too, began to stake their claims, their rough-hewn cabins and makeshift fences sprouting up like weeds along the river's edge. Weathered and worn, their faces told stories of distant lands, their eyes fixed on the copper that seemed to pulse through the valley's veins like lifeblood. The Hopewell, who had long considered themselves the guardians of this sacred resource, grew increasingly uneasy as outsiders began to assert their presence. Tensions simmered like a pot about to boil over. 
the Hopewell, proud and fiercely independent, resented the encroachment on their land and way of life. They saw rival tribes and settlers as interlopers, seeking to exploit their resources without offering anything in return. Suspicion and mistrust hung heavy in the air as each side eyed the other with a mixture of hostility and fear. As days turned into weeks, conflicts escalated. Skirmishes broke out along the river's banks as Hopewell warriors clashed with Iroquois and Shawnee raiders. Settlers found themselves caught in the crossfire, their cabins and crops targeted by angry Hopewell bands. The once peaceful valley had become a battleground with copper at its heart. Determined to protect their territory and way of life, the Hopewell began to fortify their settlements. They built earthen mounds and palisades, their warriors standing watch like sentinels as they gazed out upon the increasingly hostile landscape. Undeterred by the Hopewell's show of strength, rival tribes and settlers continued to press their claims, their own warriors and militiamen standing ready to defend their interests. As the seasons passed, conflicts intensified. The Mississippi River Valley, once a symbol of abundance and prosperity, had become a cauldron of tension and strife. The Great Copper Heist, as it would come to be known, was underway with the fate of the region hanging precariously in the balance. The Hopewell, their backs against the wall, prepared to defend their territory against all comers, their determination to protect their copper and way of life burning brighter with each passing day. As the sun's warm orange glow faded beneath the Mississippi River Valley's horizon, a sense of unease settled over bustling trade routes. Amidst the era's prosperity, merchants and traders flocked to the region, drawn by its rich natural resources. But amidst the chaos of commerce, a group of rogue traders, known as the Copper Clan, secretly wove their web of deceit. These cunning operators, masters of the shadows, had spent years studying the region's geology, mapping the hidden veins of copper that snaked beneath the earth. With intimate knowledge of every hidden stream, secluded cave, and ancient Native American settlement, they set out to exploit the region's riches under the cover of darkness. Under the full moon's silvery light, the Copper Clan's agents slipped into the forest, their moccasins silent on the damp earth. With pickaxes and shovels in hand, they dug into the earth, unearthing the glittering copper ore that lay hidden beneath the surface. The only signs of their presence were the soft clinking of metal and hushed conversations as they worked tirelessly to fill their sacks with the precious metal. As the nights wore on, the Copper Clan smugglers emerged from the forest, their canoes gliding silently down the Mississippi River. The wooden vessels adorned with intricate carvings of ancient symbols seemed to blend seamlessly into the darkness, like ghosts of the river itself. The copper, carefully concealed beneath layers of furs and woven baskets, was transported to secret caches, hidden away from prying eyes. The Copper Clan's network of informants and spies, scattered throughout the valley, provided them with invaluable intelligence on rival traders and authorities. With this knowledge, they orchestrated their smuggling operations with precision always staying one step ahead of their pursuers. As the months passed, the Copper Clan's operations grew bolder, their reach extending deep into the heart of the valley. They bribed officials, corrupted traders, and formed alliances with disgruntled Native American tribes, all in the pursuit of their illicit trade. The region's copper, once a symbol of prosperity and progress, had become a coveted prize fought over by rival factions and criminal organizations. And in the shadows, the Copper Clan's leaders, a mysterious trio of brothers, Kanak, Akando, and Jackson, orchestrated the heist of the century. Their names, whispered in awe and terror by the valley's inhabitants, were synonymous with mastery of the dark arts. They had built an empire on the back of the region's copper riches, where loyalty was a luxury they could ill afford, and betrayal was always just a whispered promise away. As the great copper heist of the Mississippi River Valley continued to unfold, the region teetered on the brink of chaos. The Copper Clan's grip on the valley's copper deposits tightened their stranglehold on the trade routes, choking the life out of the legitimate economy. It was a time of great upheaval when the very fabric of the region's society seemed to be unraveling, thread by thread, as the rogue traders of the Copper Clan pulled the strings from behind the scenes. As the sun's warm orange glow faded below the Mississippi River Valley's Horizon, the Copper Clan's clandestine operations, hummed with precision, their illicit activities having gone undetected for years. The Clan's mastermind, the enigmatic Kanak, had orchestrated a complex web of deceit, manipulating the region's trade networks to funnel copper riches into their coffers. Their vast fortune amassed through cunning and gull would make even the most seasoned traders envious. 
In Cahokia's bustling marketplaces, merchants and traders from far and wide converged to exchange goods. Amidst the chaos, the Copper Clan's agents blended seamlessly into the crowd, their eyes scanning the throngs for opportunities to strike. With precision, they would infiltrate the caravans, pilfering copper ingots and replacing them with worthless trinkets or counterfeit goods. The victims, none the wiser, would continue their journeys unaware that their valuable cargo had been surreptitiously swapped. As the clan's wealth grew, so did their influence. They began to exert control over the region's trade routes, using their ill-gotten gains to bribe officials and strong-arm competitors. The once thriving markets of the Mississippi River Valley began to wither as legitimate traders found themselves squeezed out by the Copper Clan's stranglehold. Their power was palpable, felt in every transaction, every deal, and every whispered conversation. In the shadows, Canucks lieutenants oversaw the clan's operations, their faces obscured by hooded cloaks as they received shipments of stolen copper. The precious metal was then melted down recast into ingots bearing the clan's mark, and sold back into the market at exorbitant prices. The profits were staggering, and the Copper Clan's coffers overflowed with gold, silver, and precious gems. As the years passed, the clan's grip on the region tightened. They financed expeditions into the surrounding wilderness seeking new sources of copper to plunder. Their agents infiltrated the ranks of the region's most powerful tribes, sowing discord and fueling rivalries to further their own interests. The Copper Clan's influence seeped into every aspect of life in the Mississippi River Valley, their dark machinations hidden behind a veil of respectability. In Cahokia, the Clan's presence was felt in the opulent mansions that lined the streets, their walls adorned with glittering copper filigree, and their courtyards filled with the soft glow of copper lanterns. The city's elite, enticed by the Clan's promises of wealth and power, began to turn a blind eye to their illicit activities. The Copper Clan had become the unseen hand guiding the region's destiny, their power and influence woven into the very fabric of society. Behind the facade of respectability, the Clan remained a ghostly presence, their true nature and intentions shrouded in mystery. They were the masters of the shadows, their activities undetected for years as they continued to amass wealth and power in the Mississippi River Valley. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow over the lush forests of the Mississippi River Valley, the Hopewell people stirred with a sense of urgency. As if the Copper Clan's clandestine operations had been circulating through their villages for weeks, speaking of brazen thefts and daring heists that had left the region's copper deposits vulnerable to exploitation. The Hopewell masters of the valley's rich mineral resources knew they had to act swiftly to safeguard their most precious asset. The heart of their largest settlement, a bustling hub of activity erupted as the Hopewell elders convened an emergency council to address the growing threat. The air was thick with the smell of smoldering fires and the rhythmic beat of drums as the leaders of the various clans gathered to discuss the crisis. Amidst the throng, the revered Elder Grey Wolf stood tall, his eyes blazing with determination as he addressed the assembly. Brothers and sisters, the time for complacency is behind us. The Copper Clan's greed knows no bounds, and we must take drastic measures to protect our heritage. We will not stand idly by as they plunder our riches and leave our people to suffer. With Grey Wolf's words, the Council erupted into a frenzied activity. Skilled craftsmen adept in the art of copperwork were summoned to design and struct elaborate storage facilities hidden deep within the valley's labyrinthine caves. These subterranean vaults, crafted from the finest limestone and reinforced with sturdy oak beams, would serve as impregnable strongholds, safeguarding the Hopewell's most valuable copper deposits. As the construction of these facilities progressed, the Hopewell also deployed armed guards, handpicked for their bravery and cunning, to patrol the perimeter of the storage facilities. Clad in deerskin armor, adorned with intricate patterns of copper and shell, these sentinels moved silently through the shadows, their eyes fixed on the horizon, ready to strike at a moment's notice. In tandem, with their physical preparations, the Hopewell's spiritual leaders began to weave a complex tapestry of rituals and incantations designed to ward off the Copper Clan's malevolent influence. In secret ceremonies hidden from prying eyes, the shamans invoked the ancient powers of the land, calling upon the spirits of the forest and the river to protect the Hopewell's copper and ensure their people's prosperity. As the days turned into weeks, the Hopewell's defenses began to take shape. 
the storage facilities hidden behind a veil of foliage stood as testament to their ingenuity and determination. The armed guards, ever watchful and ready, formed a formidable barrier against the Copper Clan's encroachment. And the spiritual defenses woven from the very fabric of the land itself hummed with a quiet power, potent, deterrent to any would-be thieves. The Copper Clan's activities began to falter in the face of these formidable preparations. Their raids, once bold and brazen, grew more cautious and infrequent as they realized the Hopewell would no longer be easily intimidated. The balance of power in the Mississippi River Valley had shifted, and the Hopewell people, their copper deposits safe behind a wall of steel and spirit, stood ready to defend their heritage against all comers. As the sun's fiery orb dipped below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow over the Mississippi River Valley, the Copper Clan prepared to execute a daring heist that would shatter the region's tranquility. The night air was alive with the sweet serenade of crickets and the gentle rustle of leaves. But the clan's leader, the cunning and fearless Kanak, had been orchestrating this moment for months. Under the silvery light of a full moon, a group of skilled warriors, adorned in deerskin and feathers, emerged from the forest shadows. Their eyes burned with a fierce determination as they approached the Hopewell storage facility, a sprawling complex of earthen mounds and wooden palisades that stood like a fortress on the riverbank. The air was heavy with the scent of damp earth and the distant smell of smoldering fires, which seemed to fuel their resolve. The facility, a hub of commerce and trade, was said to hold the region's largest stash of copper, a treasure trove of gleaming ingots and ornate artifacts that sparkled like stars in the moonlight. The Copper Clan had long coveted this treasure, and Kanak had devised a plan to claim it for themselves. As the warriors crept closer, the silence was broken only by the soft rustling of leaves and the creaking of wooden gates. The Hopewell guards, complacent in their routine, were caught off guard and before they could sound the alarm, the Copper Clan had breached the perimeter. With precision and speed, the warriors swept through the facility, overcoming any resistance with swift and deadly efficiency. The sound of clashing spears and the cries of the fallen echoed through the night air as the clan claimed their prize. The copper stacked in neat piles and glinting like a sea of gold was theirs for the taking. The heist was a master class in strategy and execution, with the Copper Clan making off with a massive shipment of copper that would alter the region's balance of power. As they vanished into the night, leaving behind a trail of destruction and chaos, the Hopewell people were left to pick up the pieces and mourn their loss. The news of the Great Copper Heist spread like wildfire, igniting a regional crisis that would have far-reaching consequences. The Hopewell outraged and humiliated, vowed to exact revenge on the Copper Clan, and a wave of retaliatory attacks swept across the Mississippi River Valley. The once peaceful region was plunged into a maelstrom of violence and bloodshed as alliances were forged and broken, and the very fabric of society was torn apart. In the aftermath of the heist, the Copper Clan, now flush with their newfound wealth and power, became the dominant force in the region. Kanak, the mastermind behind the daring raid, was hailed as a hero and a visionary. His name etched into the annals of history as a champion of his people. But as the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded into the distance, the true cost of the great copper heist began to reveal itself. The region was forever changed and the seeds of a bitter and enduring conflict had been sown. As the dust settled on the great copper heist, the Mississippi River Valley was left to confront the far-reaching consequences of the daring raid. The Hopewell people, once the undisputed masters of the copper trade, faced the stark reality of their diminished influence. The Copper Clan, that powerful and enigmatic entity, saw its grip on the region's commerce begin to loosen, its authority slowly unraveling like the threads of a worn deerskin cloak. The usually bustling trade routes along the Mississippi River fell silent, as if the very lifeblood of the region had been drained away. The Hopewell people who had long controlled the flow of copper from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico were left to ponder the sudden vulnerability of their dominance. Their carefully crafted network of alliances and trade agreements, once the envy of neighboring tribes, now lay in tatters. As news of the heist spread like wildfire th through the valley, the Copper Clan's influence began to wane, its members retreating into the shadows. The once mighty clan, feared and respected by all, was forced to confront the limitations of its power. Leaders who had grown complacent in their dominance wondered how their carefully guarded secrets had been breached, and by whom. In the power vacuum created by the Copper Clan's decline, new players emerged.
The Caddo people, long simmering with resentment towards the Hopewell stranglehold on the copper trade, saw an opportunity to assert their own influence. They forged new alliances, their diplomats traveling the length and breadth of the valley, weaving a complex web of trade and politics. Meanwhile, the Osage people, who had long been the Hopewell's closest allies, began to reevaluate their own position in the region. They saw the Copper Clan's weakness as a chance to expand their own territory, and their warriors began to make overtures towards the displaced Hopewell, offering protection and shelter in exchange for loyalty and tribute. As the seasons passed, the Mississippi River Valley was transformed, its ancient rhythms and power structures giving way to a new era of uncertainty and opportunity. The Great Copper Heist had unleashed a maelstrom of change, and the region would never be the same again. The Hopewell people, once the masters of their domain, were forced to adapt to a new reality, one in which their control over the copper trade was no longer absolute. In this new landscape, the strong would rise and the weak would fall. The Mississippi River Valley, once a bastion of stability and tradition, had become a hotbed of intrigue and ambition. The Great Copper Heist had marked a turning point in the region's history, a moment of reckoning that would shape the course of events for generations to come.